Remember when turbos were a big fat middle finger to the naturally aspirated status quo? The horsepower renaissance has seen the forced induction phenomenon go from Bardas add-on, turbo vet, to battle cry for efficiency, Kia Optima Turbo. From Icona boxes to high-end holdovers like Ferrari and Aston Martin, everybody is doing the turbo shuffle. But what does that mean for the gang from Stuttgart, and more importantly, the top of the line 911 that has called itself turbo since the mid-1970s? I spent a day in the 2017 Porsche 911 Turbo and Turbo S to find out. Now is a particularly fitting time to evaluate the latest iteration of the venerable Porsche 911 Turbo. Our scrutiny comes at a moment when standard issue Boxsters, Caymans, and Carreras have finally adopted turbocharged platforms. Rather than radically transforming its long evolved essence, the 2017 Porsche 911 Turbo has made incremental changes that makes it, well, more turbo than ever. Horsepower for the Turbo and Turbo S climbs 20 to 540 and 580, respectively, 0 to 60 times drop to a scant 2.9 and 2.8 seconds, and these top dogs now have terminal velocities of 198 and 205 miles per hour, marking the first time the model has crested the 200 mile per hour barrier. The forced induction flagships have different engine hardware, another first for the lineup, with the S gaining larger turbo impellers and housings. A revised differential enhances the precision of power transfer, while the PDK dual clutch transmission, the only gearbox available, gains a centrifugal pendulum for smoothness. The dynamic engine mounts now work harder for crisper response and the variable damping rates have been extended at both ends for a wider range of settings. If you're a fan of hanging the tail out, you'll be pleased to know that a new sport mode enables greater yaw angles. And if you dig in discrete bursts of acceleration, there's now a dynamic boost function that preps the drivetrain for a little extra oomph by dropping down a gear and holding the throttle open to maintain turbo pressure, increasing torque from 487 to 523 pound-feet, and from 516 to 553 pounds, foot in the S. Standard equipment now includes a sport chrono package camera-equipped parking sensor, and the Porsche Dynamic Light System. This is a car whose performance and capabilities challenge your mind and body to work faster in order to rise to the occasion and match its speed and strength, something I had another taste of during an afternoon drive through South Africa's rural highways. By pressing the dynamic boost button on the steering wheel mounted control, inspired by the same setup on the 918 Spider, the 20-second window displays a graphic countdown on the instrument panel that inspires all manner of landscape blurring hoonery. The acceleration in this mode is noticeably sharper, and the results are stunning. On one particularly vacant stretch of highway, I wound the engine up until I saw an indicated 150 miles per hour before summoning the massive six-piston ceramic brakes, which undid the ridiculous speed with alacrity. Stability at 73% of VMAX was reassuring, thanks in part to an expanded active aerodynamic profile that manipulates two front spoilers and the tail for varying high-speed conditions. Speed mode creates low drag for top speed runs, while performance mode channels more air around the car through the front spoilers and tilts the tail up, creating 291 pounds of downforce at 186 miles per hour. According to Porsche, this mode enables a two-second quicker Enreburgring lap time. If you crave a razor-sharp track toy or a glued-down canyon slicer, you may want to hunt elsewhere. It's been years since Porsche's top turbo model was the right tool for the job, and each iteration has only become more of a bullet train style Grand Tura. But if effortless, all day velocity is your prime requirement, the 911 Turbo is a relentlessly effective tool for the job, one that will press you deep into your seat with eerie tranquility as it hurtles you across earth at obscene speeds.